Hi everyone. In the history of microbiology, we started of discussing about different scientists and their contributions in the field of microbiology. We are going to discuss one of the important scientists in the field of microbiology that is Mr. Robert Koch who lived from 1843 to 1910. Robert Koch was a German physician who worked on microorganisms in early days of his medical career. Koch is called as father of modern bacteriology. Koch is a contemporary of another great scientist that is Mr. Louis Pasteur. The main contributions of the Koch to the field of uh, microbiology and bacteriology are development of isolation techniques and establishment of Koch postulates to explain the relationship between a causative agent and disease. During his studies on bacterial diseases, he found it necessary to isolate the suspected bacterial pathogens in pure culture. At first, he tried the pure culture on boiled potato slice, but it was not successful in all cases. Then, he started off using a gelatin substance, which is a solidifying substance, to prepare the solid media, but gelatin gets liquefied at 25 degrees centigrade and above. So, a better alternative of solidifying agent is agar which was suggested by a wife of Walter Hesse. Walter Hesse was an assistant of Robert Koch. From then up to now, we are applying the agar in the preparation of solid media. Robert Koch experimentally obtained the organisms of anthrax disease and its transmission was a serious problem because anthrax disease domestic animals are transmitting the diseases to humans. So what is the causative agent of that anthrax is bacillus anthracis. In 1876, Koch demonstrated the role of bacteria as a causative agent and it was confirmed by two other great scientists. One is Mr. Louis Pasher and the one is a Joseph Julius Jobert. Koch observed the rod-shaped bacteria moving in the blood of deceased animals. And by all these observations, Koch laid down the, some of the conditions known as Koch postulates. So these are the four main Koch postulates. So that we will discuss by seeing this experiment. So what he done, he has taken an experiment to find out and explain the germ theory of disease. So which was the work done by Mr. Robert Koch on an anthrax bacilli. So Koch, in order to find out the cause of the disease, he injected the blood of a dead sheep into the laboratory mice where, uh, because he did not want to kill the sheep, so he has taken the mice as an experimental animals. When a mice died, he took its blood and injected into a healthy mice where again it died. So like that, he uh, experiment with 20 times and each time the healthy mice died. Examination of a healthy mice is not going to have any bacteria. But when he examined the dead mice, he found that there are certain rod shaped bacilli in its blood. Coach tried to grow them, that means grow these bacilli in various broth cultures and finally succeeded in culturing and isolating them in the culture media. And then again, the, he took this culture media and injected into a healthy mice where again that died. So like this, he confirmed that this bacilli is responsible for causing this disease. Very soon, he observed the multiplication and he found that these bacilli are able to produce the spore formation also. So then he then transferred these spores to a fresh, uh, what we call as humor and saw, saw them germinate into a vegetative cells. In order to consequently prove the role of bacteria in the disease, he injected the spores into mice and saw them become the victims of the disease. So the examination of the dead mice 
showered the bacilli in their blood. This led Koch to propose his germ theory of disease, which states that microbes cause diseases. So by this, all these things, he proposed the four postulates or hypothesis, whatever the things you can call it as. So the first one, the microorganism must be found in abundance in all organisms suffering from the disease, but should not be found in a healthy organism. That means the diseased animal should possess the pathogen, but the healthy animal should not possess it. That is the first postulate. Then coming to the second one. The microorganism must be isolated from a diseased organism and grown in the pure culture. So the pathogen should be taken and that means isolated and it should be grown in a pure culture. But it should not be grown in the from the healthy animal. Next number three. The cultured organism should cause the disease when introduced into a healthy organism. So that's why this is died. And then coming to the fourth one. The microorganism must be re-isolated from the inoculated uh, disease experimental host and identified as being the identical. So this should be identical to the original specific causative agent. So these are the four main cause postulates that was explained under the heading of germ theory of a disease by Mr. Robert Koch. And he also discovered and isolated the Vibrio bacteria, which is a causative agent of cholera disease. He formulated the rules for the control of epidemics of cholera. So that means what are the measures that we have to take to avoid this cholera disease. He also concluded that the bacilli that cause human TB, tuberculosis, and the bovine tuberculosis, animal TB, are not identical. So as he discovered and isolated the tuberculosis causing organism, that is mycobacterium tuberculosis. He even discovered a toxin, which is again as for trypanosomiasis. He continued to work on bacteriology and serology. He was honored with many prizes, medals, doctorates from different universities of uh, several countries. Two world famous bacteriological labs are present in Paris, which was led by Pasher, one in Berlin, that is one in Paris, and another one is in Berlin by Robert Koch. So the Robert Koch died on May 17 in the year 1910. So these are the very important, prominent contributions that were led by Mr. Robert Koch in the field of microbiology. So that's the reason why we are going to consider him as a father of modern bacteriology where he isolated, discovered many of the important pathogens. Okay, so that's all about Mr. Robert Koch contributions. Thank you.